Thank you, thank you. It's uh, ready for everybody, right? Live? Already? Good. Hello, everybody outside. <laughs> there are some good news and bad news. Oh. Good news first, bad news first. Yeah. Has to feel kinder. Kinder has to. Yeah. We feel. Hi. Try. Ah. Weißt du, wie, wie sie dich vergessen macht, ne? Manchmal, so viele Kinder, vergisst du alles, weißt du? Ha? Sie ja. lässt dich so beschäftigt, <lacht> dass du... Ja, sie haben zu tun. Ja, und dann, und dann hast du vergessen. Ich auch, ne? Viele Kinder, weißt du, ja. Die Kinder sind schlimmer als deine, ja. Das ist Yeah, I asked him if he had children. He said, I have three. I said, you know, when sometimes children make you busy, forget. Yeah. And only three children and here, you know, how many children? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Today you are the rainbow of love. Rainbow? rainbow of love. <laughs> you mean this yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Just to cheer, cheer me up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I... I'd be happy when one day I could wear like them. Yeah. Uh, in a few days, man. In a few days only? <laughs> everybody gone. Uh, everybody gone, no? <laughs> no, no, no. What I mean is if I could wear this even to see you, that the, ka the karma would be allowing me to do that. Maybe in gathering? Hmm? Maybe in this gathering you, you can... Maybe, maybe, maybe. Why not? I'm not free, really? baby, I'm not free. <laughs> I'm not free. My life is not my life anymore. My life belongs to all of you. And whatever affects you, affect me. Yeah, whatever I have to do, I have to do. Yeah, all because of you. I don't have a life. I don't have any freedom. I don't have even freedom to choose my clothes or to wear what color my hair is. This is not my liking. Yeah, because when you dye the color, there's some chemical, you know, I don't like. I had to do it. Yeah. I do as less as possible. Oh, it's just still, you know? Mm. I don't have freedom, I tell you. I'm free, but I don't have freedom. Nope. <laughs> yep. Understand now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not uh, it's a nuisance, but I don't mind too much. It's just that it's not like I choose to, okay? <laughs> Doesn't matter, it's a small thing. It's not a big sacrifice like Sekamoni Buddha. Hmm? I just want my hair, not my head, thanks God. Huh? Okay? Okay. Do you want to know who Anan is? Anan. Yeah, Anan. The assistant of Buddha. Yeah. yeah. But do you know who he has been, who he was, before he is? You want to know? Yes. Okay. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read Sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten direction, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition. My heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Just to cheer up a little bit from all these hells. <laughs> we, we have hell in the Sutta. <laughs> oh God. All right. Uh, this is about Anand. Yeah, Anand, the one that told us all these stories. Yeah, we are in debt to him. Mm. If he wasn't there, there was no video, no digital camera, nada. 
He's the one who brought all this to us. And he was even the one who pleaded with the Buddha to leave, to let the, the, the nuns come in the Sangha, yeah, because of his mother. Yeah. You know, his uh, stepmother, of course, but so he pleaded with, with, uh, with, with him, say, this mother has been taking care of you since childhood. This is as much as your mom. And she only pleaded to become a nun. You must allow. <laughs> yeah, but the, there has never been nuns before, you know, all these thousands of years. So if the Buddha allowed that, he worried that all the monks will make, you know, like a, <laughs> a revolution perhaps, or, you know, like unrest, you know, feel unpeaceful. And also worry that in the future, if he make already one concession, another nuns will come, and then maybe the Sangha will be in trouble. Because mostly they are only monks, you see? And when they're so near together, maybe some little conflict or temptation. Yeah, number one. Number two, she's his mother. If she came in, maybe she act like queen in the palace again, you know, and tell the monk, go get my water, go <laughs> bring me my lunch, you know. Uh, then he worried about that, so that's why he didn't want to give uh, or the nun, to, uh, didn't want to give permission for nun to come in, for for woman to become a, a, a Shanghai member. Uh, also, woman's body is different, you know, yeah. Too, too much ascetic, he worry, worry the woman cannot bear, yeah? Eating only once a day, sleeping on the floor, and woman body is different, yeah. For also all the future woman who comes in, you know, not just his mother. And the mother was a queen, you know, in the palace. She sleep on rose bed, you know? <laughs> she bathe in perfume, yeah? And she put uh, makeup and jewelry, you know, very majestic person. If she became a nun, she has only two, three, uh, two, three pair of clothes to cover her body, and a blanket, maybe, if have, yeah. So uh, he, he doesn't think she can bear it, yeah. But there, therefore, he he uh, make a lot of condition, you know. <laughs> yeah, that she has to be just like the monk treated equally, yeah? Furthermore, she has to be bowing to all the elder monks existed already in the Sangha. In that case, because he worried that um, being a queen, you know, so used to it being with servants and ordering around, even though maybe she was a very sweet queen, but still she's not used to it. With, you know, with, uh, sitting around on the floor and everybody else, Elder monk tell her what to do, so he worry like that. So he say, if you want to become a nun, then you have to be subordinate to the monks. Then she accept everything, whatever he said, he, she okay. <laughs> so he has to let her. And later on, that's why there's a tra tradition. Like even though nuns and monks are equal, but nun always have to bow to monk. That's what I don't like. My knees feel pain if I do. I don't mind. I did bow before, you know. What I mean is, we sh at the Buddha time, it's different, you know, because she came in later, and el other monks already been with him a long time. So, of course, they are senior, you know, then it's maybe okay. Number one. Number two, the Buddha want to chop chop the ego of the queen, and that's okay, yeah? But uh, men and women are equal to me. Some woman has more a spiritual attainment than any other monk. You see what I mean? A layman or nun, same. A laywoman also sometimes has more attainment than, than monk, and nuns have sometimes more, you know, uh, virtue. So I don't think that tradition should continue, that's all, you know? Uh, that's all, that's all, it doesn't matter. Mm. Uh, okay. Before, I, I was still wearing a nun's robe, you know, I stay sometimes in a temple, and afterward I already came out and lecture already because, you know, request. And I passed by and visit the temple again, and the abbot tell me, why don't you 
prostrate to me. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> so I prostrated to him, no problem, and I prostrate also to the new monk. <laughs> he said, eh? You prostrate only to me, Master, why you prostrate to him? I said, I prostrate to the Buddha in him, the same as Buddha in you. <laughs> this thing. What's, the, what's the big deal with this body? You kneel down or you stand up? It's just a body, right? <laughs> uh, just now I invited one of the Chinese uh, in my, to my hut. And she, she, I give her a chair and she don't dare to see it. <laughs> she was kind of, kind of nervous and kind of trembling a little bit. She said, no, no, I, I, I cannot dare sit like this. I just kneel. I said, no, <laughs> don't kneel. It will hurt your knees <laughs> because there's, there's no cushion or nothing on my floor. And it's cement floor only, you know, the road. There's nothing, don't do that. I say, it's only the body. You stand up or you kneel or you lay down, <laughs> it's the same to me. It's just your body, so I know you respect me in my heart and you show that, it's enough. This woman, she meditates six to 10 hours every day. No fail. If busy, six hours, not busy, eight to 10 hours. Many quaning hours. No wonder she's so humble, you know. Uh, no things. Yeah, the more people practice, the more humble I become. They become. I oh, accept your master. She kind of not very humble. <laughs> she wear clothes and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And she said, "Oh, she saw me sleeping under the bed. You know, because <laughs> the bed and mattress is under the bed. Uh, because originally you make the bed high, you know, so I can even go under there." Not just dogs. It's originally planned for dogs. Uh, dogs stay underneath, I stay on top. So we saved electricity for heater in winter and all that, you know? But right now the big dog is there, and he likes to be alone. He's too big anyway, and then he likes his aircon. So I give him next door, yeah? There's the thing I cover and make an aircon, and the other three dogs in the house. You probably saw them when you take refuse when it's raining. <laughs> And they're sick now, you know, old and sick, and don't look very pretty. But they still, you know, so strong, wagging tails and stuff. <laughs> and then she saw it and said, oh, it makes her heart very painful. I said, but why? Why? I'm very happy here. Why everybody feels sorry for me? I mean, <laughs> what can I do with a big house? I can only s sleep on one bed, yeah? If a big house, can I sleep Monday, Tuesday, is a Thursday, <laughs> every day different bed or something? <laughs> yeah, just make me more tired walking around. I'm perfectly happy in a smaller place because as I'm so busy, if I have bigger house, there will be more trouble, uh, less organizing space, you know? They are small, but I have everything there. It's, I don't waste too much time yeah, to find my things. What else I need? Yeah, nowadays you can work at home anywhere where with the telephone and text. And, yeah, so no problem. Don't feel sorry for me, okay? Because that means you don't understand me. I don't care, palace or, or hut, it's the same. I stay there because it's a very good spiritual energy right now. But if the house is where it has better energy, I would come in. I don't, I don't care house or not house. I just don't really like the house. I prefer not. It feels so, so separated, <laughs> too heavy, you know, cement and stuff. I feel more in the nature, you know, near to the trees and stuff. So the hut will make you nearer, because you have to walk outside often to wash yourself or to... Because so near. In the house you would go from one living room to the bedroom, and then bedroom to the bathroom, and bathroom to, to the garderobe, and then you just all day inside. But if you are in a small hut or tent, you had no choice but to be <laughs> outside often. And very, very happy for me. Very, very happy. Don't ever feel sorry for me. I say, tell us, but why? <laughs> why? A lot of people have no room to go, nowhere to go, no food to eat, no water to drink, and had to bath in the snow because uh, the war, you know, children uh, have to walk baref barefoot. When the war come, you know, many war, some small war broke out in different country, and they have to take their quickly belonging. They couldn't take anything, many things. 
children, old elderly women, pregnant women, they all have to live in somewhere there, just a roof on top where the snow is so thick. That is, you should feel then sorry. I am the most lucky woman on the planet. I don't have nobody to force me to live in a palace or in a house. I have my own choice. I can choose to live anywhere I want, any time, wherever suitable at that moment. Understand? I'm a very, very, very fortunate person. I want you to know that once and for all. Don't ever feel sorry for me. That means you don't understand. Okay? The value of the person or master doesn't doesn't uh, lay on the house, bigger house or bigger temple for her or for him or a lot of stuff. It's not like that. The value <coughs> is inside. And if I know my own value, <laughs> it doesn't matter what I have or not have, it's the same. I'm very happy. Okay? Yes. But I know you love me and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But don't worry, okay? I'm perfectly happy. Better than if you give me a palace. Truly like that, okay? Yes, mm -hmm. In the beginning of my mission, sometimes they rent the hotel with a presidential suit. I always complained. <laughs> it's a one kilometer from <laughs> from the door all the way to the other to the kitchen or to meet somebody, you know. And in the middle, big room with a long, long forever table. You know. <laughs> presidential suit. And I travel, you know, a thousand miles and tired and jet lagged already and have to walk like that. What what the blessing in what is the good of that? Huh? It's crazy. <laughs> All the ideas in this world are not always correct. Okay? You don't honor me by giving me a presidential suit. Just make me more tired. <laughs> Walking and cannot even call the attendant, hey, yo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so tired to walk. Come here, please! <laughs> Can you hear me? Hello! <laughs> you know? So next time, if you give me presidential suit, please provide this walkie-talkie. <laughs> one for me and all. Whoever attended, I have to give one, okay? I'm not walking all the way to, to ask him, please tell me where is my shoes? <laughs> where is my toothbrush? <laughs> Understand? Yeah. That's why the last lecture tour, I don't let anybody go near me. I take my own suitcase. I did everything. I even drive that uh, uh, blooming uh, uh, manual car, which I never touched in my life, and almost kill myself on the road. Understand? Lucky is a small country, even though a highway, but it's, it's not like American highway or European fast lane, you know. Oh, God, I have been really a crazy person. Yeah. yeah. And then, you no, know, before, when I was came to Taiwan, you know, whenever I, I come back home, you know, I just say to someone, okay, come and get me by car, and then everybody knows, and then the whole airport was streaming, filled, filled with Taiwanese disciples, hurrah, hurrah, oh, God, oh, God. And even, uh, even uh, days to carry, you know. Oh. <laughs> and then all the airport personnel has to make a room for us, and oh, my God. So later, when I come home, I go quietly alone. I don't even dare ask a car to come. Not a contact person, not a non-contact person. Oh, not black, not white, nada. I can't trust anybody. I went all myself <laughs> by taxi, you know, quiet. Uh, I told you already. So when the, the great last gathering over there, I came in with taxi, and they stopped me, you know. Cannot come here. ID car, please. <laughs> <laughs> Taxi cannot go in, you know, just have to park far away and walk in. I said, can I come in, please? I don't have ID card. <laughs> and then I suddenly hear the voice and I look, oh, Master! <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Master is here, everybody go! <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was very famous in the airport. <laughs> So even whenever I come in and out, the, the immigration officer always asks me, 
nobody came to greet you? Uh, or, or nobody come to, to uh, send you off? I said, no, today no, no. <laughs> uh, she asked in a different way that I did not understand. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. She said, yeah. Normally they would say, 没有人送你啊? She said, 别人送你啊? I did not understand much Chinese, you know. So I said, well, what did you say? I couldn't understand. Even though, and then the second time she said, I understood, but I couldn't understand why the officer would ask me about. <laughs> and then, then I realized I'm too famous in the airport. <laughs> so how come nobody saw you off today? And then and nobody came to get you? you know? So then finally I said, no, not today. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I know you love me, but uh, my happiness don't lay in big house or big room, okay? Or a lot of servants or a lot of attendants. It's not like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> I prefer to be alone so I can have more quietness and time to think and to organize many things and to take care of many things, okay? Mm. Where is Anand gone? <laughs> I just saw him there. <laughs> I told you, right? He was there, now he just disappeared. Oh, God. Anan! <laughs> come. Great beach, you come. So many uh, nuns nowadays, the Buddhist nuns, also worship Anan, you know, as uh, their patron, a patron saint. Yeah. yeah, because of him. Otherwise, the Buddha refused outright. Don't let any woman in the Sangha. Nowadays, it's... Ah, oh, got him. Yeah. <laughs> I put like that so he won't run away again. <laughs> Nowadays, even many temples in, in India, they don't let women inside the gate. You know, if you come, you don't know it's a man temple, you come maybe... By the way, ask for some water. It happened to me. You know, I was walking and I have nowhere else uh, to go, so I, I knock, knock and want some water, but no, no coming. The monk said that. A big monk come out with matted hair, you know, <laughs> and burn. No coming, no. I said, just want some water. No. <laughs> Very strict, yes. We women are so scary. At that time, I wear only a white punjab, you know, and no makeup, nothing. He, if he see me now, he would say, get the dogs, <laughs> shoo her out quick. <laughs> you know, worse, hmm? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it happened, you know, if the man, woman too near, it could happen. Yeah. Just by, by chance or by sheer this energy mixing or chemical reaction, you know. Okay. Okay, this is about Anan. Hmm? Oh, oh no. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's about Anan, but then also, uh, first I have, I have heard, yeah. One time the Buddha in the uh, Save uh, country, in the Golden Garden, yeah, Gold Garden of uh, Kapkodok and the Prince Kida. At that time, I was the most intelligent person. Oh, Anan, very humble indeed. <laughs> he himself said that. He himself said that. At this period of time, I was the most intelligent person and uh, uh, have the, the most uh, accurate memories. Yeah. Therefore, many Bichu was thinking to him, themselves, we don't know what did Anan do in the former lives uh, that accrues, that uh, acquired so much merit? And then now he can even become the, the chief of the, uh, the Sutra uh, Recollection Group. Yeah. And then whatever the Buddha said or whatever he has heard, he remember everything, not even forgotten one sentence. So they thinking together thus, and they came up to the Buddha and say, <clears throat> uh, pray to 
uh, you know, the world honor one. Okay. Uh, Anand Bichu, in the former life, what has he done to earn so much merit that nowadays he could remember everything like this? Please tell us. So the Buddha say, excellent, I will tell you. Uh, this is long, 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 long time ago. Mm. Long, long time ago. There was a Bichu who has uh, adopted a sa Sami, you know, Sami in San Chris also? Okay, meaning a novice, you know, a novice monk, a young boy who came in and learning to be a monk. Mm, yeah. Okay. Every day, he make him uh, learning the sutra by heart, very diligently, on time, and never, never uh, fail. Yeah. If, if this sami uh, recite the sutra, you know the the teaching and all that according to the time schedule, then then the bhikkhu very happy. Yeah. If not, then he is, is uh, upset and sometimes uh, reprimanded him, scolded him. Yes. Okay, because of that, uh, this uh, small Sami was uh, kind of <laughs> nervous all the time, a little scared. Uh, <laughs> he's scared because if he eats uh, well and full, then he has not enough time to to uh, recite the sutra because he not only eat, he must probably have to go back in and come home and prepare for the master and, and do all kinds for the master also, you know? And then if then he saves some time for him to eat. If he eat well and good, then he has not enough time to to do the schedule of reciting the sutra. Sutra means, you know, like Bible. Mm. And if he do it diligently, then he cannot eat. You know, eat only once a day. If you missed it, you can't eat again. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, whenever, if he went out for arm, you know, I mean, begging for food, if uh, they have give him enough food a lot, then he can come earlier. Then he can do his schedule on time. Yeah. If not, then he cannot. Or maybe less, yeah? Mm. Sometimes he go out doesn't mean people give him immediately food, you know. Sometimes have to go very far. Sometimes give not enough, and then the time he has to go back. Yeah, because they don't eat after lunch, afternoon. After the noon time, they don't eat anymore, the monks and nuns. Unless when they're sick or something, and they have special food for, together with the medicine, it's allowed. Yeah. Until they get well, then have to go back to schedule. Today he went out. One day he went out, and uh, at that day uh, not many people give him food. So he keep walking, walking from one house to another until almost noon already, and still don't have enough food for both of them. And then he has to go home, but still uh, late for reciting the sutra. Next day he was uh, going out begging again, and then he, he was very, very sad. And he, he's walking and crying at the same time. And then one of the rich person in that region come and ask him, why are you crying, monk? And then he said, sir, my master is too strict to me. Uh, every day he make a schedule for me to recite all the Buddha Sutra. If uh, if I recite it on time and follow the schedule, then he's very happy and re re relaxed and relenting. If not, then he's very uh, cranky, yeah, scolding me. Because going out to for arm, you know, meaning begging for food, going out for arm is not always, uh, how you say, precise. You know, you cannot you cannot count the time. If someday, you know, the people give a lot of food and, and quick, then I go home early, of course. Then I can do it on time and phone schedule. 
Well, some day they don't give. I give very little, then I have to go far, and then when I come home, it's late. I have no time to to fulfill the schedule. Mm. So I'm very sad. That's why I'm crying. You know, young boys, of course, it's too hard, <laughs> too hard <laughs> such a life. So think twice before you want to become monk. Okay, huh? Mm. But even you become a monk here, this is a pro not a, really a problem. It's just that you have to be sincere, you know? Don't just come in for play and mess up and make in trouble for me. I, I told you I'm fed up already, okay? So no need, no need monk anymore. <laughs> it's very difficult to find someone who really wants to be a monk and follow through with it, you know? Yeah. It's very difficult to keep your ideal in time of test. Yeah. yeah. There were some people a long time ago, they stay in the desert, you know, and they, they eat just bread together with the dry bread, with the, with the water, and they continue to stay. And they wrote a book about it. Yeah. So the uh, gentleman, the rich gentleman, a uh, noble gentleman said, Oh, so from today then, you just come to my house. We always have enough food. I will always give uh, ample food for you and your master, so you never have to worry about uh, food anymore. Then you can have time and concentration to recite the Buddha Sutra. Yeah. Wow, that's very nice. Yeah. <sighs> so since then, you know, yeah, he always go there and has everything he need, and master and disciple. Very, very heavy, 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 <laughs> heavy ending. <laughs> and then the Buddha remind the assembly thus, Bichu, you should know, the master of the Sami at that time is uh, the Buddha, um, a stable light, you know, that's the name. <laughs> And the uh, Sami at that time is the past reincarnation of myself. Yeah. The noble gentleman offer food every day to the master and disciple. That was Anan. Ah, Namo No wonder he remember everything. His master forced him to re memorize everything. So he. You know, life after life, he has the DNA, good memory, you know? That's why, aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. no wonder, okay. Because in the past life, he has keep reciting the Buddha, uh, Sutra, probably of the past master or maybe, maybe a uh, present master at that time. Maybe that master is a Buddha, you know, and he was with him. Yeah. So um, this time he can remember everything, <laughs> whatever is said to him, yeah. Whatever sutra or any one word that I said, he never forgot. Yeah. All the bichu, you know, the monks have heard that. Everyone was so glad, happy, yeah, and inspired to recite the Buddha Sutra, yeah. And also uh, uh, wanting to, to offer, you know? Yeah. They love all that. And then they withdrew. Okay, that's good. Now you know. Now you know our benefactor, <laughs> why he is so good like that. Okay, huh? That's a good story for a change. But still have some scolding and it's sad and <laughs> it's just a little bit, just a little bit, yeah. In 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 Chinese idiom idiom they say <coughs> idiom they say <coughs> strict master produce best disciple, excellent disciple. So maybe the, because the master was so strict, so Anan, life after life, you know. I have such a good memory, yeah, a good point. Mm. Recite my teaching every day. <laughs> no, food. Huh? No, food. no food otherwise. <laughs>
two meals become one meal. <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, now we go back to hell. <laughs> you want or not? Yeah, we get a couple more stories in there. I haven't read it, but yeah, okay. Huh? You like hell? <laughs> yeah, it's better you know it so you don't go there. Huh? Yeah. In order to protect the people. Some person have to say, oh, in that forest, there are tiger who will tear you up and will eat you, and oh, no, I don't ever go there. Then at least you know. Hmm? Hmm. Sounds scary, but if you don't describe it, you think, oh, what the heck, I go and see what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. If they say, just don't go there, you know, then you don't really understand it. But if you describe it in detail, then you know and you won't go. Hmm. Maybe you still want to go, then it's your problem. <laughs> Where were we before? Comic retribution. Have I read that? Yes. yes. All of that? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. That's, that's cool. Yeah, okay. So the four heavenly kings vow to protect all beings, right? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Mm. Are you sure? Yes. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. So everything, yeah. And then now we come to the names of hell. At that time, universal, worthy Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, said to a store Bodhisattva, Mind you, it doesn't, not every story says that I have heard, yeah? Mm. Because this is the whole story that Anand heard, yeah? So the only beginning, you see? Beginning of the sutra, thus I have heard. Because this is one sutra together, so one chapter after another, we don't have to repeat the same again. But this is all from Anand, imagine. I want you to recite the whole chapter yesterday that I told you. <laughs> 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 See if you can. Yeah, just so that you know, Anan is truly incredible, awesome. Yeah. yeah, but everything has the consequences, you see? I'm sorry, I keep reading so I don't see you. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just like many genius, you know, they were born four or five years old, already can play piano or can do great things or dance, and, as if professional, because I've done that in former life, okay? So it's, there is a karma, there is a reincarnation, or else how you explain all that, yeah. There is reincarnation, because my parents were not the one who taught me all this. <laughs> I was the one who taught them afterward, yeah, okay? My parents... Uh, he was like smoking, and, you know, all kind of gambling and all that. He was bored with life. <laughs> After he heard about me, he stopped everything. Not that I told him. Hmm. And then he stopped everything. He'd been smoking since he was 10, and he stopped at 70 something. Imagine how hard he did all that. Because he said, My daughter is teaching the right thing. I have to make an example to support her. It's just beautiful, man. Mm. Why are you crying, baby? Huh? huh? With the story? Yeah, my father was a very good man. He's very kind also, very kind. To other people as well. And he's kind of a philosopher, you know? Mm. He stopped everything, he just vegetarian, vegan, you know? And nothing how difficult it is to stop at that age, after the whole lifetime, smoking non-stop. Chain smokers, wow, he's incredible, such a strong will. Hmm? Hmm. All right, 
At that time, universal worthy Bodhisattva Mahasattva said to a store Bodhisattva, humane one, no, kind one, yeah, humane one, for the sake of gods and dragons, those in the fourfold assembly and all other beings of the present and future, please tell us the names of the hells where beings in the Saha world on the continent of Jambut Vipa must suffer retributions for offenses they commit. Please also describe what happens during retributions undergone for evil, so that beings in the future, Dharma and in age, will know what those retributions are. Erstor Bodhisattva said, Human one, Based on the awesome spiritual power of the Buddha and relying on your strength, great mm. Bodhisattva, I will give a general list of the names of hells and describe some of what happens during retributions undergone for offenses and evil deeds. Um, before I forgot, this is printed uh, and, and led on internet by... by uh, I don't see it's probably International Buddhist Association somewhere. Didn't say anything here. I I made offering to the Buddhist Association in Los Angeles, where they train monks and printed the the this book that and some more books that I read to you yeah, and some more sutta like that. So probably this is the same one. They translated from from those. We have to be also grateful to them. Yeah? We thank them. It's a Buddhist association, International Buddhist Association. They're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. But some of the sutra are printed by means of offering from the lay people, you know, because they heard that printing sutra and give away or, or, you know, for the uh, temple and then so for people to come and take it or making some offering. And a lot of merit, <laughs> many people print it. And this is one from internet. Uh, bravo, good job. <laughs> we are grateful to them. Kong Ta Uleng, Kong Dak Uleng, mean infinite merit to them. Um, if somebody can help me to find out whether it's the same association or not, if it's a different one, then tell me so I can make another offering to them so they can continue doing their job. And the merit I return to them too, for them. <laughs> I guess I have merit enough. <laughs> I don't do it for merit. I do it because it's the right thing to do, because they need it. The other monks, you know, together they don't have much money. I don't know how many lay people offer. So we do some of our part. Yeah, that's all. Okay, okay now he begins. Humane one. They call each other humane one. <laughs> I mean, you know, a great humanity in their heart. Yeah. Humane and yeah, humane uh, quality. Humane one. In eastern Jambadvipa is a mountain range called Iron Ring. The mountain is pitch black because the light of sun and moon do not shine on it. It's on our planet. This iron mountain, iron ring mountain, is on our planet. <coughs> Scary, no? Huh? And this is only one planet. Other planets also have similar. I mean, some, not all planets has that. But even sun and moon do not shine on it. And sun and moon normally is no discriminating. Shy on all alike, but cannot shy on this. A great hell is located there, named ultimately uninterrupted. Another hell is called Great Avicii. There is also a hell called Four, four home, home, or Four Horns. Another hell called Flying Knives. You know, you can imagine. What for Flying Knives? Knives, flying. Yeah. A hell called Fiery Arrows. You can imagine what for. A hell called squeezing mountain, you know what's for. A hell called piercing spears, you also understand what for, right? 
The name speaks it all. A hell called iron cards. You also know. A hell called iron beds. A hell called iron oxen. A hell called iron clothing. Not to iron your clothes, but iron clothes. <laughs> Probably offenders are made to wear iron clad and iron clothes, are very heavy and make running, you know, make them run. A hell called thousand blades, and you also know what for. A hell called iron asses, I mean uh, donkeys. Huh? Mm. Iron oxen, iron donkeys. They have no soul, they have no pity, they just do what they have to do. A hell called molten metal, you know what for. A hell called embracing pillar, you know what for. The pillar is normally burning hot, and the uh, offender are made, forced to embrace it, and cannot, cannot free himself. A hell called flowing fire, a hell called plowing tongues, plowing tongues. You know the plow that they use for oxen to plow the field? They will plow the tongues of the offenders there. A hell called hacking heads, a hell called burning feet, a hell called picking, picking eyes, a hell called iron pellets. They make the offender take this uh, burning hot iron pellet as food, eating. They force them to, to swallow this thing again, again, and again. A hell called quarreling. A hell called iron axe, and a hell called massive hatred. <sighs> Erstor Bodhisattva said, Human one, within the iron ring are endless hells like that. There is also the hell of crying out, the hell of pulling tongues, the hell of dung and urine, the hell of metal locks, the hell of fire elephants the hell of fire dogs, the hell, hell of fire horses, uh, of fire oxen, of fire mountains, uh, fire rocks, uh, of fire beds, of fire beams, of fire, fire eagles, uh, sawing teeth, uh, flaying skin, flying, flaying skin, peeling skin. Now, just the, the name is scary already, yes. The hell of drinking blood, the hell of burning hands, of burning feet, of hanging hooks, of fire rooms, of iron cells, and the hell of fire wolves. Each of those hells contains lesser hells numbering from one or two or three or four or two, two hundreds of thousands. Each of those lesser hells has its own name. The Earth Star Bodhisattva told Universal Worthy Buddha, a Bodhisattva, Humane One, such are the karmic responses of beings in Jambudvipa who commit evil deeds. The power of karma is extremely great. It rivals Mount Sumeru in its height. It surpasses the great oceans in its depth. Death, death, <laughs> and the death, yeah. It obstructs the path leading to sagehood. For that reason, beings should never think that minor bad deeds are unimportant or assume that they do not count as offenses. After death, there will be retributions to undergo that cover all those details, even minor. Uh, sin committed will be also accounted for. Nothing will be overlooked. Nothing escape. The judgment of hell. Fathers and sons have the closest relationship, but their roles diverge, and each must go his own way. Even if they met, neither could consent to undergo suffering in the other's place cannot exchange karma. Yeah. 
Now, based on the awesome spiritual power of the Buddha, I will describe some of the retributions for offenses that take place in the hells. Please, humane one, listen for a moment to what I'm going to say. Universal Worthy reply, I have long known of the retributions that happen in the three evil realms, uh, paths. I hope in asking the humane one to describe them is that, uh, my hope, you know, is that when beings in the future, Dharma and in age, like right now, I mean, after the Buddha died for a long time, yeah, who are doing evil deeds, hear the humane one's descriptions, they will be moved to take refuge with the Buddha. I also hope like that. That's why I read all this you know, uh, awful things to you. Otherwise, it's also not pleasant. Yeah. I hope all that, you know, I hope all the people who heard this will be, you know, frightened to become more benevolent and good for the whole world, for the society, and teach their children and grandchildren to be morally uh, correct and don't do evil deeds, yeah? Because if nobody tell them, they don't know. Just like too many law in one country, if nobody tell you this and that is bad, except the killing or the stealing or that, then we know it is unlawful. But many other law we don't always know, yeah? Mm. That's why people need the lawyer, then they come and tell them, yeah, this is okay, this is not, and then they try to help you. Earth Thor Buddha said, uh, Bodhisattva said, Humane one, this is what happens during retributions in the hells. Offenders may go to a hell in which their tongues are stretched out and plowed through by cattle, or to a hell in which their hearts are poured out and eaten by yaksas. You know, one, some of the devil race, devil race, demon race in hell, yaksas. Or to a hell in which their bodies are fried in cauldrons of boiling oil, or to a hell in which they are forced to embrace red hot copper pillars. Uh, I thought so. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh, terrible, God. Or to a hell in which they are burned by fire that constantly pursues them or to a hell in which cold and ice are all pervasive, or to a hell in which excrement and urine are endless, or to a hell in which flying mazes are unavoidable, or to a hell in which fiery spears stab them repeatedly, or to a hell in which they are constantly beaten on the chest and backs, or to a hell in which their hands and feet are burned, or to a hell in which they are bound by iron snakes that coil around them, or to a hell in which they are pursued by racing iron dogs, or to a hell in which their bodies are stretched by iron mules, you know, iron donkeys. Human one, to inflict these retributions in each hell, hundreds of thousands of instruments made of copper, iron, stone, or fire arise from karmic forces. Those four materials come into being in response to the kinds of karma offenders created. created. If I were to explain in detail what happens during retributions in the hells, then I would need to tell of the hundreds of thousands of sufferings that must be undergone in each specific uh, hell. How much more would that be the case for the sufferings in all the many hells? Now, having based myself upon the awesome spiritual power of the Buddha, I have given a general answer to the humane one's question. For if I were to speak in detail, it would take aeons, aeons, you know, many, 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 many trillion, billion, gazillion of years, many aeons, yeah. Okay, 
uh, end of the, the chapter of names. Thank you, Bodhisattva. You should thank him, huh? You want some more? Or we? The praise of the Buddha. Okay. This is good. Good stuff. At that time, oh no, this is the, the Buddha's praises for the Earth of Bodhisattva. At that time, the world honored one emitted a great bright light from his entire body. Can all of you hear me? It's far from the microphone. My back kind of tired. Oh, woman. What to do? Huh? Ah, yeah, that's a good idea. Good idea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Experience mean. <laughs> yeah, I use everything. I use my foot to stick to get things. Lemon again. Oh my God. Yesterday I said lemon juice is good. Today I got it for lunch. I got it for dinner. <laughs> got it for breakfast. Nice. Somebody made it just right. Thank you, kitchen. Bless you. If you have a lot of lemon in your garden, you can, uh, how you say, pickle it, you know, the whole lemon. I don't know how they do it. Sometimes maybe they just pinch on the lemons and then they put salt in it and then a little water and then they put it in the sun for a long, long time. Tastes re- delicious. You, you can no, you make it like a drink, just like lemonade. But the taste is so fragrant, you know. I don't know how they make it. Just look on the internet, maybe the Vietnamese people know how to make it. I like that very much when I was young, you know. Yeah, very refreshing. It's like lemon, but it's more fragrant, you know, more tasty, and it's more thirst quenching. At that time, the world honored one emitted a great bright light from his entire body, total illuminating Buddha's lands, as many as grains of sand in billions of Ganges River. What is this? Ah? <laughs> huh? What? No. I am expert in this field. <laughs> I'm checking out to make my throat feel better. You're wrong. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But it's not lemon water. <laughs> okay, I can have a change, you know? Sometimes they put like seven things on it, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> His strong voice reached to all the bodhisattvas, mahasattvas in those Buddha lands. That was from heaven, you know, easier to do this kind of thing. As well as to the gods, dragons, ghosts, and spirits, humans, non humans, and others, saying, Listen today as I praise Ersto Bodhisattva, Mahasattva who displays an inconceivable, awesome spiritual strength and compassionate power throughout the ten directions as he rescues and protects beings when things happen to them as they suffer for offenses they have committed. (sighs) After I pass into tranquility, all of you bodhisattvas, mahasattvas, and all of you gods, dragons, ghosts, spirits, and others should use the vast numbers of expedient devices to protect this sutra 
and to cause all beings to testify to the bliss of nirvana. This one. God, um, Buddha wants all being, all of the powerful, diva, god, bodhisattva, protect this sutra. So it must be very important. Hmm. Yeah, because if everybody knows the cause and consequences and the terrible suffering they have to undergo in hell, then maybe they think twice before they do something bad. Maybe the world will have more peace. Hmm. After that was said, a bodhisattva named Universally Expansive arose in the assembly, placed his palms together respectfully, and said to the Buddha, We are now about to witness the world honored one, praise earth, bo- earth Lord Bodhisattva's inconceivably great, awesome spiritual virtue. We hope the world honored one will also aid beings in the future Dharma and in age by telling us about how Earth Star Bodhisattva benefits people and gods and about the working out of cause and effect. <clears throat> that will help the gods, dragons, and the rest of the Eightfold Division, along with beings of the future, to receive the Buddha's teaching respectfully. At that time, the World Honored One <clears throat> said to the Bodhisattva universally expansive, to the fourfold assembly and others, Listen attentively, listen attentively. I will briefly describe to you how Earth Star Bodhisattva's virtuous, de- virtuous deeds keep benefiting people and the gods. Universally expansive reply. Excellent, world honored one, we are happy to listen. The Buddha told the Bodhisattva universally expansive. First, if in the future, good man or good woman who, upon hearing Earth Star Bodhisattva Mahasattva's name, place their palms together, do it mm, respectfully. Praise him, bow to him, or gaze in worship, I mean, gaze his statues. Yeah? They will overcome 30 aeons worth of offenses. 30 aeons. Understand? Erased. Whatever you have done, but it in 30 aeons, it will be erased. Yeah, they will overcome 30 aeons worth of offenses. Incredible. Thank you to you, Bodhisattva, Ersto, Kristigapa, right? Universally expansive. If good man or good woman gaze upon and bow but once to paint it, or drawn images of the Bodhisattva, or ones made of clay, or stone, or lacquer, or gold, or silver, or bronze. They will be reborn one hundred times in the heaven of the thirty-three, and will eternally avoid falling into the evil realms. If their blessings in the heavens come to an end and they are born in the human realm, they will become national leaders who suffer no loss of benefits. Even just to bow to his status and recite his name in respect. This is a great being, huh? Mm, incredible. Thank you to you. Thank you, thank you. There may be women who dislike having female bodies. Why? Uh, that's such a woman? You dislike female body? No. It's good. <laughs> it's just troublesome sometimes, but it's better than shaving every day. <laughs> Painful, you know? <laughs> Cologne, <laughs> skin, rash, all kind of but there are some women who also shave every day, huh? <laughs> yeah, I saw advertise on TV, and it's so... Yeah, all kind of blades and... 
yeah? Of shaving apparat, this one is better than the others. Guarantee, you know. <laughs> Three weeks, don't have to shave again. <laughs> or some wax or something, out, out. <laughs> I thought, my God, poor woman, why, why does she grow so much hair like that? Everywhere, you know? Out here, out there, out everywhere. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, yeah, that's another blessing that I should count on my fingers, you know? Because I don't have to do that. It seems so strange to me that some women have to shave every day. I wonder how can women have to shave? I never know that. You know, I don't know that in my family. <laughs> yeah, but after I saw on TV, I thought, oh, there are such women. Some women even have mustache and beard and also, <laughs> so I have to say, <laughs> no, yeah, yes. And there's one who has a long beard and she's famous now, Conchita, yeah, very famous. <laughs> Bless her, so cute. And she talked very gently. Hmm? I saw sometime on TV this Euro contest. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yeah, very good that the world people amuse themselves with such, you know, uh, harmless uh, contest. Yeah? yeah? Beautiful. Hmm. Okay. Why do I talk like that? For what? All right, cheer up a little bit, you know, all this, all this hell is like me, kind of heavy. But it's serious, huh? Watch your tongue, huh? Watch your mind, your body, your speech, and your actions, truly, okay? Yes, so that the world will benefit from your pure energy, not just yourself, and make a good example for others then people will be curious, you know, be attracted to your energy and come around and ask you, and then you have a chance to tell them to behave in such a way so that to avoid suffering in the future and in hell. That is your mission, to be good. It's a mission, it's a job, okay? It's an obligation, it's a duty. We own that to the world, okay? Thank you. <laughs> the Buddha, uni okay. The Buddha told the Bodhisattva universal, expansive, universally expansive. This is a translation from Sanskrit. Name. <laughs> Every name has some, you know. Lucky is a short, no? Mm. If in the future, mm. oh, another one. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, they become leader. Okay, there may be woman. In the future, there will be women who dislike having female bodies. Suppose they, are, they wholeheartedly made offering to the images of earth or bodhisattva that are paintings or made of clay or stone or lacquer or brass or iron or other materials. If they continually make such offerings day after day without fail, using flowers, incense, food, clothes, drink, clothing, the Buddha statue need clothes, <laughs> uh, color silk, banners, money, jewels, and the other items as offering. I just symbol. Nah? The Buddha don't need just symbolic of respect and and sincerity. Yeah. When those good women finish their current female retribution, then throughout hundreds of thousands of aeons, they will never again be born in worlds where there are women. So I'll just stay with men all together, how boring. <laughs> Much less to be one. Okay, any of you want to be born as men and just live with men forever in that kind of world? Yes, no, no? Oh. Uh, you live with one man and you feel already good enough, right? <laughs> already trouble enough, right? They think the same about you guys, about women. <laughs> okay. Wow, but that is awesome. Hmm? It's awesome. Unless it be 
through the strength of their compassionate vows to liberate beings so they reincarnate as a woman. Based on the strength of their offerings to the earth store bodhisattva and the power of their meritorious virtues, they will not be born into female bodies throughout hundreds of thousands of aeons, and that is uh, like forever. Hmm? Moreover, universally expansive, women who are ugly or prone to sickness will dislike those problems. If they gaze at and bow to images of earth store bodhisattva with sincere resolve for even just a few minutes, then throughout millions of aeons they will always be born with full and perfect features, just for a moment but with all sincerity and decisive, you know, uh, determination then, okay? And then, wow, through millions of aeons, they will be born perfect and beautiful. I guess all of you have done that. <laughs> all of the women I see here have done that. Huh? Hmm. This is all for the woman or for men who has no other methods, you know, like one method or anything like that for liberation. Yeah. This is at least to help them to be happy to in humans' life, yeah? Because many humans are not happy. Yeah, at least like this. If they are happy in the other form and then they do can do that to to succeed, then it's wonderful. Mm? Wonderful. Yeah, to be a beautiful woman is Wonderful feeling, no? Yes. But it's not always a blessing. <laughs> because sooner or later a man will chase you and then you have to become pregnant and go through pain to give birth to children and all that, and then uh, took care of the whole household and then bound it there. Mm. So it's not always... Uh, Beauty is not always uh, the blessing, huh? Not always. Even to be a queen or something, uh, a lot of work. <laughs> if some, if those women who are ugly do not dislike having female bodies, then throughout billions of lives they will always be born as women of royal lineage, princess and queens. Ladies, yeah, okay. Or we'll marry into royalty, or we'll become daughters of prime ministers, prominent families, or great elders. They will be of, of upright birth and full feature. They will receive such blessings from having sincerely beheld and worshipped Earthstar Bodhisattva. Moreover, universally expensive. There may be good men or good women who are able to play music, sing or chant praises, and make offerings of incense and flowers before images of the Bodhisattva, or who are able to exhort one or more others to do likewise. Now and in the future, such people will be surrounded day and night by hundreds of thousands of ghosts and spirits who will even prevent bad news from reaching their ears, much less allow them to be personally involved in any accidents. Incredible power, my God. Moreover, universally expansive, in the future, evil people with evil spirits or evil ghosts may see good men or good women taking refuge with, respectfully making offering to, praising, beholding, and bowing to images of earth or bodhisattva. Those beings may make the mistake of ridiculing such acts of worship, saying that they are of no merit. They may sneer at those good people, condemn them behind their backs, or get a group or even one other person to have even as little as one thought of condemnation. Such beings will fall into the avici hell, and the extreme misery they will undergo as retribution for their slander will not be finished 
Even after the thousand Buddhas of the worthy Aen have passed into tranquility. That's a long, long time. Because it takes a long time for one Buddha to appear. And it takes one thousand of Buddha like that. And yeah, that's what is is incredible. Only after that Ian will they be reborn among the hungry ghosts, where they will pass a thousand more aeons before being reborn as animals. Only after another thousand aeons will they obtain human bodies. Oh, dear God. The the Earth of Bodhisattva, I read it somewhere before here that he observed the human world. Any of our thought, deed, and action is all sinful, mostly sinful. None, none are very pure. Most of people are like that. He said, "Yeah." They will obtain human bodies, but they will be poor and lowly, with un- in- incomplete faculties, and their evil karma will cause them to suffer mental afflictions. Before long, they will fall into the evil path again. Universally expensive, Bodhisattva, such are the retributions that will be undergone by those who ridicule and slander others' acts of worship. How much worse will the retributions be if they have other evils, views, besides their slandering? <sighs> Moreover, universally expensive, in the future, men or women may long be bedridden and in spite of their wishes be unable to either to get well or to die. At night, they may dream of evil ghosts or family and relatives, you know, deceased, or of wandering on dangerous paths. In numerous nightmares, they may roam with ghosts and spirits. As days, months, and years go by, such people may weaken and waste away, cry out in pain in their sleep, and become progressive progressively depressed and melancholy. Those things happen when the force of karma has not yet been determined, which makes it difficult for them to die and impossible for them to be cured. The ordinary eyes of men and women cannot recognize such things. In that situation, some people should recite this sutra, allowed once before the images of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. They should also offer possessions which those sick people cherish, such as clothing, jewels, gardens, or houses. They should speak distinctly to the sick person, saying, Now, before this sutra or or these images, we are offering these items on behalf of these sick people. They might offer sutras or images or commission image of Buddhas or Bodhisattva or build stupas and monastery or light oil lamps or give to the eternal dwelling, I mean ashram. They should tell the sick people three times about the offerings that they are being made, informing them so they both hear and understand what is being done. You hear me? You understand? Okay, the people who are sick but cannot get well and cannot die. That means the decision has not been made from the judgment, you know, of uh, the council of judgment, whether or how to condemn this person. So during these undecisive times, if they offer, uh, you know, things to the Buddha's image only even, not the live Buddha even, or uh, recite this sutra, of uh, Earth Bodhisattva once in front of this Buddha's image and get all the beloved items from the sick person to give it to charity or make it offer. Hmm? Yeah. You know, whatever they love, the sick person, beloved items, they should 
bring it out and offer it to the Buddha images and recite this sutra, then or, or, or give it to the monastery, you know, to sell it or buy lamps, buy oil, buy things to offer to the monks or the temple. Yeah. If their consciousness are already scattered and their breathing has stopped, mean the sick person, then for one, two, three, four, and on through seven days, others should continue to inform them clearly and to read this sutra aloud, even if the the person is still not very conscious. Yeah, mm. but he will hear, you know. Yeah, because his soul leaves the body but can hear everything. Then the, when those people's lives end, they will gain liberation from all heavy and disastrous offenses they committed previous lives, even offenses warranting fivefold uninterrupted retribution, meaning even for the worst hell, all these offenses will be cleansed if they recite this sutra in front of Buddha image for the, dead, for the dying person. Yeah. They will be born in places where they will always know past lives. How much greater will the karmic reward be if good men or good women can write out this sutra themselves or commission others to do so? If they can carve or paint images themselves or commission others to do so, the benefits they receive will be great indeed. Therefore, universally expansive. If you see people reading and reciting this sutra or even having a single thought of praise for it, or if you meet someone who reveres it, you should employ hundreds of thousands of expedients mean to exhort such people to be diligent and not retreat, you know, in spiritual belief. Yeah. In both the present and the future, they will be able to obtain billions of inconceivable meritorious virtues. Well, moreover, universally expensive. Beings in the future may, while dreaming or drowsy, see ghosts, spirits, and other forms that are either sad, weeping, or worried, fearful, or terrified. Those are all fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, husband, wife, and relatives from this person. Ten, a hundred, from one, ten, a hundred, or a thousand lives past who has, have not yet been able to leave the bad destinies. They have no place from which to hope for the power of blessings to rescue them, and so they try to communicate with their closest descendants, hoping that those relatives will use some expedient devices to help them get out of the evil past. Understand? You know, like, it's said that if uh, you see sometime in your dream, you know, some ghosts or some sad images of people, that means it's your far relatives in the past, past relatives, this you might not even know. They try to communicate this way hoping that you understand and you pray for them or light incense for Buddha or do something to pray for them so that they can liberate themselves from the bad destinies. Universally expensive, using your spiritual power, powers, exhort those descendants to recite this sutra with sincere resolve before the images of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, or to request others to recite it, either three or seven times. When the sutra has been read aloud the proper number of times, relatives in the evil past will obtain liberation and never again be seen by those who are dreaming or drowsy. You know, the, the sad image will not appear anymore. Moreover, universally expensive people of low station and those who are slaves or who are bonded or who are deprived of their freedom in other ways may be aware of their past deeds and wish to repent of them and to reform. 
If one be beholding and bowing to a star bodhisattva's image with sincere resolve, for seven days they are able to recite his name a full 10,000 times. Then when their current retribution ends, those people will always be born into wealth and honor for thousands of lives. How much the more will they avoid having to endure any of the sufferings of the three evil paths? But have to recite with sincerity, huh? Not just say, okay, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> then, then it's better put the record on. <laughs> you know, record player on. So it has to be from the heart. Yeah? Our intention is important. Moreover, in the future, in Jambudvipa, when the wives of uh, Kshatriyas, Brahmans, uh, Kshatriyas, Brahmans, elders, Ubasakas, and those of other names and clans are about to give birth to son or daughters. Ah, yeah, this is what the one I, I remember in Taiwan. Okay, that's fast. Newborn sons or daughters, the family members should recite this inconceivable sutra and recite the Bodhisattva's name a full 10,000 times during the seven days before the birth of their children. If those infants, whether male or female, were destined to undergo a terrible retribution for things done in past lives, they will be liberated from those retributions. They will be peaceful, happy, easily raised, and will have long lives. If those children were due to receive blessings, then their peace and happiness will be increased, and as will their lifespans live longer life. Yeah. Moreover, universally expensive on the first eight 14, 15, 18, 23rd, 24th, 28th, 29th, and 30th days of the lunar month, the offenses of beings are tabulated and their gravity are assessed. Every single movement or steering of thought on the part of beings of Jambudvipa creates karma and offenses. Everything. <laughs> Everything we think we do or not do is is all very uh, unfavorable to us, favorable to us because it's mostly negative. That's what he meant. How much more is that the case when they blatantly indulge in killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, false speech, and hundreds of thousands of other kinds of obvious offenses, meaning ordinary before doing even all these great offenses, every thought, every action, every movement of human beings, human beings often negative and create bad karma already, not to talk about doing all this as well. Yeah. If they are able to recite this sutra once on those ten vegetarian days, oh, before the images of Buddha, because this is for normal, ordinary people who can only become vegetarian in ten days. You know, convenient method. <laughs> so if they recite this as well, it helps them. Mm. Before the image of Buddha, Bodhisattva, or worthy one and sages, then there will be no disasters for within a radius of 100 yajanas, I mean, all around them, is a protected field. They will be safe wherever they go. Mm. The relatives of those who recite, both old and young, now and in the future, will be apart from the evil paths, meaning they never have to walk the evil paths again. Yeah. Throughout hundreds of thousands of years, if they can recite this sutra once on each of these ten vegetarian days, then there will be no accidents or illnesses in the family, and there will be food and clothing in abundance. Now you know why the monks and nuns, they recite sutra every day. A different one, huh? not just this one. You see, every, every temple or every festival, or if you see the Dalai Lama, 
with his monk, they always recite one plate after another, you know. They still use this uh, old-fashioned printing, one, one page at a time, single pages. They read and then they fold it, read and fold it, and then they put in, uh, in a silky cloth to protect it. Very thin paper. <laughs> and they believe that reciting it to let the ghost also hear it. <laughs> when I was, uh, you know, at home before I left home, I recite all this, you know, and I, I open my window even though freezing in winter. I, I hope the goats will hear it and, <laughs> to help them, you know. Yeah. That's what I was thinking when I do this. Nobody told me this. I was thinking to help these suffering ghosts and evil spirits, yeah? And maybe some some neighbor uh, with deaf ears be able to, you know, some words will fly into their ears, one or two, and help them too, yeah. My neighbors were so good, because I recited loud, an open window. And I do this wooden fish, clock, 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 but they don't say nothing. Maybe fall asleep, you know, with the rhythm. You know. <laughs> okay, you recite, you have to say, Namo Lautanato Raya, Namo Raya, you know, with the rhythm, and it is too basic and always the same. Probably they fall asleep, that's why they don't complain. <laughs> they didn't complain at all. But now and then I put a gong, bong, you know, that probably the way go. <laughs> what is that, you know? So I heard some door open and close, and then I namo ho la again, then I probably sleep again. <laughs> Moreover, oh, uh, yeah. There will be no accident or illnesses in the family if they recite, you know, every day for these ten vegetarian days. Yeah, and there will be a lot of uh, food and clothing, richness, you know, so easy to be rich and uh, sufficient. Why don't people do it? I mean, they don't have to follow me, they just recite this sutra. It's a long one. <laughs> every day they have to recite one sutra like this for ten days, then they have no illness and no uh, no short of food and clothing. Universally expensive, you should know of the beneficial deeds done by Earth-Store Bodhisattva as he makes use of his indescribably many billions of great awesome spiritual powers. The beings of Chambudvipa have strong affinities with this Buddha. If they hear the Bodhisattva's name, see the Bodhisattva image, or hear but a few words even, a verse or a sentence of this sutra. Ah, so I was right. Open window, let the ghost hear, the neighbor just hear a little bit. <laughs> it's not bad. It helps, yeah. Then they will enjoy particularly wonderful peace and happiness in this present life. Through hundreds of thousands of ten thousand of future lives, they will always be handsome and beautiful, or beautiful, and they will be born into honorable and wealthy families. Yeah, if everybody recite this, then I don't have to do anything anymore. <laughs> we print it and give it to all the house. <laughs> And then everybody rich and healthy, and wealthy and uh, contented, so no war, no problem. Hmm? Good solution, yeah. But I'm just worried if we give to everybody, they will throw it, you know, and that my karma. They have to believe in it, have to worship it, you know, respect it. Then they have benefit, because this sutra is not only the merit of the Earth Store Bodhisattva. It's also the uh, this embodied, you know, blessed by the words of Sakyamuni Buddha as well. You see, double blessing. Yeah. And all the names of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva inside, that's uh, a lot of blessing. Yeah, I guess that's why. <sighs> Having heard the Buddha, thus come one, uh, praise us, the Bodhisattva, in that way, 
universally expensive bodhisattva knelt, placed his palms together, and again addressed the Buddha, saying, "Were honored one, I have long known that this bodhisattva has both inconceivable spiritual powers and mighty vows. I have questioned the thirst come one so that beings in the future will know of these benefits. You see, that because you wonder why a Buddhisattva don't know anything, has to ask the Buddha. No, they know, they just ask so that other people will know it, so that it becomes official and then print it in, in uh, black and white like this so future generations can read. Wow, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. The Buddha did a good job and all his friends and his Sangha, you know, in collecting all this. Because not everybody say all these things, you know, or all the sages, of course, they teach Kuan Yin Method. This is sufficient also, yeah. But this is for people who has no master and no Kuan Yin Method, and they'll be reborn again and again. At least they will be reborn well, happy, yeah, protected. It's wonderful. Um, I received this answer most respectfully, were honored one. How should this sutra be titled and how should we propagate it? The Buddha said to the universally expansive, this sutra has three titles. The first is the past vows of Erstor Bodhisattva. It is also called Erstor, Erstor's past conduct and it is called also Sutra of the Power of Earth Stores Past Vows. Because this Bodhisattva repeatedly makes such great and mighty vows through our long aeons to benefit beings, you should all propagate this Sutra in accord with his vows. After universally expensive had heard that, he placed his palms together respectfully, made obeisance, and withdrew. End of this chapter. Man, we're lucky have Kuaning Method, become Sao hearers, and also hear all these sutra, wonderful beings in the universe who's working so hard to save us, mm, to save all beings. We're really lucky. I thank you. Sikamoni, Earth Store Bodhisattva, and all the Bodhisattva and the Buddha. Thank you so much. Thank you.